Hey everyone, uh, I'm Roger, also known as the Woodworking Gamer here at a company called Munchkin Metropolis. Um, and this will be the first in a series of videos that will show my entire journey uh, and experience with water fasting. Now for those of you that are doing the, the initial research now, you don't know what water fasting is, we're going to get into that first and then we're going to move on from there and talk about uh, my particular journey. So fasting in various forms has been around for thousands of years. Um, some cultures use it as uh, religious ways to uh, get in touch with themselves. Uh, it's also great for doing a cleanse, for cleaning your body out, uh, a detox is what some people call it. Um, and basically it is doing without uh, food or water or any intake of calories and that would be considered a dry fast okay now water fasting is different water fasting in its purest form is you only drink water period you don't eat anything you don't drink anything else a true water fast is specifically water only for a duration of time now some people will do it for three days or seven days or 14 days or however many um, my initial goal was seven. Currently, as of today, I'm on day 41. Uh, but I do not do a true water fast, and I'll explain what I mean in, in a little bit. Um, besides just taking in water, that's really all a water fast is. Now, it's become really popular in recent years because it's a great way to lose body fat and drop weight quickly and I mean pound a day or better quickly, okay? Uh, but it, it's not without dangers. If you are uh, diabetic, you should consult your doctor. If you're over age, um, and, and I don't know, what, what's the word? If you're a senior citizen, you should definitely check with your doctor. Um, if you have various heart conditions, you need to check with your doctor. Matter of fact, unless you're just, you know, in good shape already, you should check with your doctor. And even then, check with your doctor first. Now, I'm sure that you've done research before coming to YouTube and finding this video series. So I'm not going to get into all of the tiny details and all the science, but there is a lot of science behind this. I'm actually in a group with 30,000 people with a lot of anecdotal uh, information and stuff, but there are tons of studies that have been done for the last 70 years, and there are others that are still being done now. There are actually more studies being done on water fasting currently than in all of history. Um, so it's a pretty big thing. But now, let's move past all of that, and let's get into why I decided water fasting might be for me. I stumbled onto it in one of my social media feeds and it looked interesting and honestly it looked a little bit crazy all right good going without food I personally uh, have what's known as binge eating disorder now I've developed it through habits my entire life and it's a habit so it can be broken I need to point that out now ha huh, okay so my whole life I've been into working out, bodybuilding, lifting, trying to swell up, get big muscles, all of that, right? So I've always eaten large amounts of food because I'm always burning large amounts of calories every day. That's just a normal thing for me. My average calorie burns about 4,200. Um, and that's without me hitting the gym hard. All right, so, well, I should say that was my average before I started aging. I'm over 40 now. My average is at, it's dropped down to like 3,800. And it'll continue to drop as I move forward in years. And the reason I mention this is because even though my calorie burn has dropped, my calorie consumption, my eating has maintained the high levels of 5,000 plus calories per day, which means on average, I gain two to three pounds per month if I don't watch what I eat. And there's no way for me to, to stop that other than focusing on it. Okay? Um, 
Now, water fasting is really cool, and you see massive results right away, but they're a little bit false, and I'm going I'm to tell you why. Let's say that I start my fast on a Monday. That means that Sunday, I have eaten, right? Okay, so when I weigh in Monday morning, I have food and everything that's going through my digestive system, and it's still processing. So once I start my water fasting, about three days later, three, maybe four, that's about how long it took me to clear everything out, you see initial weight loss of all of the stuff that was processing in you, plus your actual weight loss. So the first week, it looked like I lost 16 pounds. Just say it. 16 pounds in a week is false. At least six of that was food. At least. Maybe eight. Hell, I eat a lot. Okay? So think about that when you think about your initial weight loss. Because a lot of people will do a three-day fast, and they're like, oh, I lost 12 pounds. But the next day, I gained five of it back. Well, you know why? You ate. That's all there is to it. You ate. Now, the amount of water we drink on a water fast varies from person to person. Um, it's been said that you should only drink when you're thirsty which is fine after you're into your fast. But when you're first starting, you need to have some sort of routine. So the average, I believe, is one ounce of water per two pounds of body weight. So for me, when I started, I was 267 pounds. That's 134 ounces of water per day, so just over a gallon, which is easy because I drink that anyway. I actually increased my water take to, to about a, a gallon and a half a day Initially, I'm, I'm back now to around a gallon, but everything happens in cycles. So that's why I decided to water fast. It looked interesting. There's science behind it. There's a ton of people doing it, and I was just like, shit, I'll try it. Throughout the course of my life, I've tried damn near every diet. I've done, done keto, Atkins. I've done calorie restriction, low carb, low fat, uh, fruititarian. I've never done vegetarian. I've never done vegan. I like meat way too much for that. Nothing against y'all. It's just me. We're all different people. But anyway, now let's get to what to expect during your fast. And, and we're going to go in. Now, this version of me should have been recorded at the start of my series, but I initially wasn't planning to do a series. I initially was planning to do a seven day water fast just to try it out. Um, things happened, I just kept going. Now I have video clippets of me about once a week just checking in and I'll be putting them in so that you can see uh, where I was at during that time. So it'll go back to a bit chubbier me and then come back to this version which is 41 days into my water fast. Now what to expect when you're fasting. The first day, expect to be hungry. Your body has been conditioned to expect food on a regular basis and at certain times. The whole breakfast, lunch, dinner uh, nonsense. Your whole life, you've been programmed to think you need to eat this much every day. This is simply not true. You don't have to eat three times a day. You can eat once a day. As long as you get in enough calories to survive, you're good. And that's when you're not fasting, of course. Okay, but that's why you're going to be super hungry the first day. My advice for day one, stay busy. Find a project. Do something. Whenever you're hungry, drink more water. Pound the water, just like in this clip. Now, every day when I wake up, I pound one of these. Uh, just like this. I'm going to go ahead and pound one in front of you so you can understand. And there you go. Yeah, I know, right? Anyways, so I do, I do four of those bottles every day. It's normal. At least. Okay, now, 
Day one, as I said, stay busy. Ignore the grumbling in your tumbly. It's, it's going to go away. It'll pass. I promise. Deal with it. You only have to make it through the first three days before you're good. Okay? It gets a lot easier. Day two, what to expect. You're still going to be hungry. You're going to be a little bit grumpy. And... You haven't eaten in two days, so when you stand up too quickly, you may get a little bit lightheaded. That's normal to be expected. Don't worry with it. Stand up slower. Now, just like on day one, stay busy. Find a project. I'm a woodworker. I just make shit up. I'll build something random just to keep me occupied. I'll go for a walk. Do whatever you have to to stay busy and avoid thinking about food because your mind for the first week is going to go back to food regularly. You're used to having it. It's only been a day without it. Your body's like, Shh, give me food. You have, to, you have to be the boss of your body, straight up. Okay? So that's day two. Day three, you're still going to be hungry, but towards the end of day three, ketosis kicks in really well. Now ketosis is a process which takes your body, and the way I like to explain it to people is it's like taking a car that burns gasoline and converting it to diesel. So what you're basically doing is, is you're taking your body and you're taking it from carbohydrate-based fuel um, to fat-based fuel. And once you switch over to the fat-based, you can get into the reserves of fat that's all over your body. And your body will start to look for fat first because there's no carbohydrates in, in your system. Okay? Now, day one, you're burning through all the glycogen that was created from carbohydrates that's been sitting in your liver. Day two, that's gone and your body starts looking anywhere for fuel. It starts looking at your muscle too a little bit. Okay? But day three, it realizes food's not coming. It switches into ketosis, which is where you want to be. Um, ketosis basically means your body switches into burning fat, which is actually a better and cleaner burning fuel for, for us. It, it's just the way it is. If we ate nothing but meat, there you go. You can eat meat all the time. You're going to burn fat all the time. Meat's also very nutrient dense, so it's a good thing when you come off your fast. Anyway, we'll get to that in a little bit. So, once you get into ketosis, a couple of different things happen. First off, your body, as I said, starts looking to its fat stores to burn fuel. That's all fat is. People, they give fat a bad rap, you know, and we get too much of it, um, and I'll explain why in a minute. But fat is nothing more than an evolutionary thing for our bodies to store fuel. It's nothing but stored energy. So don't look at your body and say, oh, I'm so fat. Look at your body and say, I have enough fuel to run months without eating. You know, that's what it is, basically. All fat is, is fuel. It breaks down into glycogen, which is your energy. It breaks down into various nutrients. And there are a couple of things that it doesn't break down into. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, basically, electrolytes. There you go. You can still take your electrolytes on the side. All right, sodium, potassium, magnesium, whatever. You know what electrolytes are. If you don't, look it up. It's, it's really everywhere. It's common knowledge. Okay, so that's what happens on day three. And ketosis has one major benefit. It is a massive hunger suppressor. I have not been hungry since day three. 41 days in, haven't been hungry. No grumbles in my tumbly. None of that. It's great. Honestly, I didn't think I was going to make it a week, day one, day two, early day three. I was, man, I need to give up. And then I was, this is the conversation in my head. Dude, fuck this, we're hungry. What? You a little bitch? You can't do seven days? You can do anything for seven days. I thought, I thought you was a man. The fuck, dude, I am a man. What do you, what do you, what? Fine, we ain't quitting. We'll just keep going. End of day three, both of them guys told you. What's up? Now, I was going to start this video and do a short little clip of me each day along the way, but honestly, I haven't noticed any real difference 
um, or any negative thing that would show up on camera. Um, as I'm recording this now, this is my seventh day without food. Bam! So, my initial goal was seven days, as I said. I made it to seven days, and you know what? I wasn't hungry. I felt great. My energy levels are still high. It's crazy. I have a lot of, I'm saying I have high quality fuel right here. You know? Now, throughout millions of years, our bodies have been conditioned. We have evolved to expect harsh winters where food is scarce. Now, to survive those winters, our body has adapted and it adds and stores fuel. Just like a squirrel saving its nuts, our body saves energy in the form of fat and that gets us through long periods where food is not available. So for people that are going to tell you this is super dangerous, this is scary, shouldn't be done, they're absolutely wrong. Now for some people it's dangerous. As I said, talk to your doctor. I'm not a doctor, I'm a woodworker, right? And a country boy. So, doctors, I don't particularly care for them, that's just me, but go check with your doctor. Make sure that your body can handle a fast. You might have heart issues. You might have diabetes. Don't be dumb. Don't hurt yourself trying to lose weight. Whatever weight you're at right now, wherever you are right now, you are perfectly fine just the way you are. If you want to get healthier, that's on you. Get healthy the right way. Don't hurt yourself. I can't stress this enough. Don't hurt yourself to lose weight. It ain't worth it. Okay. I'm done ranting, sorry. Now, ah, where was I? Okay, so anyway, evolution makes our bodies store fat, saving energy for periods of time where food is not readily available. However, in the last 100, 150 years or so, something has happened. We have become really great at agriculture and food in general ain't for everybody there's still starving places on the planet but in general for most of us I'm in the US food is readily available year-round even seasonal items cost a little more during the winter but I can get watermelon year-round okay so because food is readily available our bodies throughout millions of years have learned to store energy this much of our history now millions of years now a hundred years ain't even, you know, there ain't even space for a sheet of paper between my fingers. That's the percentage of time that we've had food readily available. So our bodies have not readapted. Our bodies are still wanting to store fat, but we can eat year round. So what happens is every year we gain a little weight. Unless you do something, diet, workout, whatever, to burn it off. If you're watching this video, you didn't. Neither did I. That's, hey, same boat. Okay. <clears throat> Anyways, so since our bodies are used to storing fuel and the world no longer requires us to store fuel, they combat, they clash. So you're gaining weight, but you're not losing it because there's no scarce food, hard winters, right? So you're constantly, every year, gaining. Unless you do something to counteract it, which is what we're going to talk about here the rest of this video the beginning of this video. Today is day 41 and this is where I'm going to end the first video of the series. But I'm not going to stop my fast. I am going to continue doing what I've been doing um, until I reach my goal weight of 180 pounds. As of Monday, six days ago, I was 228 pounds down from 267 when I started. Uh, now let's get on to the details of my particular fast. Okay, as I said earlier, I didn't do a true water fast. For the first 30 days, I did only water with one Diet Dr. Pepper every day for my caffeine. I like it, it's zero calories. Okay, 
and one Powerade Zero 32 ounce bottle. Zero calorie sports drink with electrolytes, which we mentioned earlier. Okay, that's what I did every day for 30 days. Mostly water, one Diet Dr. Pepper, one Powerade Zero. Still zero calories, I still stayed in ketosis, obviously, and my fast continued forward. Now, if you're looking to purge all the toxins from your body, I'm gonna tell you right now, get an electrolyte supplement, comes in a pill, I bought them after day 30, okay? And don't do the Diet Dr. Pepper or the Powerade Zero. Just do the water and supplement. Don't even start to supplement until a weekend, okay? That will help kill the toxins and purge your body and get you super healthy and cleaned out. Okay, now, ha, here's some fun stuff that's kind of gross, all right? Doing it this way, after the fifth day, I was still going to the bathroom, but it wasn't solid. I was blowing it up with spray and brown water out my ass. I felt kind of like... I have to pee out of my ass. Oh, man. So, think about it. It was crazy. It freaked me out a little. Because I kept pooping water for like a week and a half until I realized that because I was taking in something that was not pure water, the Diet Dr. Peppers and the Powerade Zeros, I was putting something in that had to come back out. That's all there was to it. It was, it was liquid. And the way I look at it, it just cleaned me out. So, get some good toilet paper, maybe some wipes with aloe, and you'll be fine. Other than that, I have had high energy every day. I've continued to not only work, but to walk for two to three hours every day. Um, I am not lifting weights since I'm not taking in any protein. And my body's breaking the fat down there. There's a little protein there, but not enough to build new muscle. So I might do a five-minute workout just to get a little bit of a pump. But that's it. I leave it alone. I don't want to tear the muscle down it's not going to rebuild at this particular juncture. And once I get to 180, I intend to switch the flip or flip the switch. However, I misspoke. Apologies. Um, and then I'll be going into a high protein diet with a lot of bodybuilding and nothing but lifting weights and cutting cardio almost entirely to build my frame back out. Because as you can tell, I've shrunk a bit. Now my muscle's still there, I just don't ever pump it up, so it looks and feels small to me. As soon as I start lifting weights, it'll swell back up, it'll stay pumped, I'll feel good. You know, about the size of it, and I'll make it bigger. And it's just going to be fun, really. So, as I said, that's what I did for the first 30 days. Okay guys, so today is day 30 of my water fast, and uh... I still feel great, so I'm going to keep going. Um, I don't know when I'm going to stop. Uh, originally, it was going to be seven days. Now it's 30, whatever. Uh, if I start to feel bad, I'll stop. Um, and if not, then I'm just going to keep going and dropping the pounds, you know. So every day that I make it is another step towards that goal of getting my body back in full condition shape. So, uh... I'll check in with you again later. Thank you. <clears throat> Day 31, I actually had a meal. My first and only. And it was a reward for making it a month. Because I thought, hell, I'll do a month and quit. But I did a month. I did a meal. And here's what my meal consisted of. Six ounces of raw sea salted almonds. Uh, four small grilled fish fillets. And one bowl of Progresso chicken noodle soup and that shit was awesomely good I'll tell you and I ate all of this slowly over the course of about three hours so when I say a meal technically I mean I ate slowly because my stomach had shrunk up over the course of a month you know that happens when you don't put food in it, it doesn't need to be stretched out so it, it shrinks back to a normal size all right basically my stomach right now is about the size of my fist I think because that's about how much food I can eat before I start to feel really full. But after that meal, I decided to go back on and stay on my fast. So I broke it for a day.
but I didn't break it long enough to change my habits. And here we are on day 41, and this is video one of the series. I'm going to continue not only through the rest of my fasting system, but I will eventually get into a process of fasting for X number of days, off for X number of days, and continuing forward until I drop all the way down to where I want to be. And then when I start bodybuilding, I'm going to continue fasting. I'm going to keep it in my lifestyle, so I'll probably eat six days and fast one every week. Um, and that's just for the added benefits, the health benefits, the autophagy, where you're eating all your damaged cells, just because it's awesome, honestly, and it's healthy. And there are studies that have proven a correlation between um, autophagy and water fasting and age-related diseases such as dementia and Alzheimer's, which hereditarily I'm prone to have. So, you know, anything that can knock the chance down a little lower, I'm down. I'm going to do it. That's it. All right. Also, um, digestive disorders. I had IBS going into this. I don't know if I still have it, but I haven't since I've been on the fast. Of course, I haven't been putting anything in to come back out. So, there you go. But yes, the next video is going to be a continuation of my water fasting. And the third and final video should be my bodybuilding back up to gain muscle mass. Um, I want to thank you for checking out my video. And if you, uh, you know, subscribe to my channel, that would be really awesome. Also, if you have any questions, post it in the comments below. Thank you.